Eloku barata zikrano ku vele perete. La guana managa satarate. Liku du vreke manakrazi taraku vele prando sagarate. Inguta bana. I cover the environment with the blood of Jesus. I cover the environment with the blood of Jesus. I cover the environment with the blood of Jesus. I cover the environment with the blood of Jesus. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. No witchcraft operation will be able to function here. I am a carrier of the Holy Ghost. I am a carrier of the nature of Christ. I am a new creation man. I am a God here on earth. The Bible says ye are gods and all of you are the children of the Most High. I am a God here on earth. God has put me here as a God representing him. So there can be no negative operation. No kuvala prato vele peresia teliga. No negative operation can operate here in the mighty name of Jesus. So this is the second segment of this teaching. Okay. I am on the number one of the part two or the, the second edition of this teaching. Okay. How to know there is a witch in operation in a place? How to know there is a witchcraft operation in a place? How do you know? That there is a witchcraft operation in a place. How do you know that there is a witch in your territory? How do you know that there is a coven around you? How do you know that this environment that is high level of witchcraft operation? The number one thing you are going to use to know that I want to teach you tonight. I want you to write it down. Because when you write it down, you're going to use it for prayers. The number one thing you're going to use to know is when there is high level of dead cases among young people, when young children, young people are dying, the old people are not dying, but the young ones are dying. Every time a young man would die, every time a child would die, every time children would die, but the old people are not dying, you will know that there is a witchcraft oppression in that place. There is an oppression of witchcraft in that environment because the Bible made us to understand that we shall not cast our young. Young people are not supposed to die while the old people are there. Okay? That is natural about life. Young people are not supposed to die. The old one have to die first before the young ones. Okay? The young one must also grow old. So when there is high level of death rate okay young people are dying while the old people are not dying the young ones are dying the old people are just they're looking fresh they want to, they continue living older and older but the young ones are dying all the time you will know there is an oppression of witchcraft there is witches and wizard oppression in that very environment in that very territory that is the first thing you used to know number two now i want to say this a believer cannot be possessed but satan can afflict or attack a believer who lack knowledge your finances or career can be attacked yet you are not a witch because you lack knowledge thereby exposing yourself to the enemies when you see constant going down of your finances you are very hard working you are very lucrative you keep working you work and work and work yet nothing is coming into your finances you will maybe you are you are a salary earner you get the salary before you know it before you open your eyes and close the money is gone you don't use the money to do anything. You just see the money slipped away from your hands. I want you to look within you. There is an operation. Because one of the things that witchcraft will want to afflict in the life of a believer. There are two things which is will easily afflict in the life of a believer. Number one, your finances. Number two, your health. <laughs> There are two things which is will easily attack in the life of a believer that lacks knowledge. 
Number one is your finances. Because they know if you have money, you will want to sponsor the gospel. You want to bring light to that environment. So they don't want light in that environment. They want darkness. Number two, they want to make sure that the person does not have good health. So they want to make sure you spend money on your health. You spend money on sicknesses and diseases. So these are the two things. So if you constantly see your health having problem, you will go to the hospital. They cannot trace what is happening to you, yet you're dying. Your finances, you don't know what to use your money for. There is a witchcraft attack. There is a witchcraft operation around you. Number three, let me talk about the, this aspect is for priests, is for pastors. This aspect I want to talk about. If you are operating a church and suddenly the church falls and people started leaving and you know within yourself you did not sin, a witch is in operation either in the church or outside the church, but in the church territory by bringing a coven close to the church. Okay, let me explain that. If you are operating a church, a ministry, a fellowship, an outreach, a place where you gather people, suddenly, suddenly the ministry just crumble. Hello, ko mana gavale ko parano kulia sitareno ku vele perete. Rando panazina ku valane le banana no no shagane de. Rakumane se balamana ne sidra. O grono para ku vele perete zitara. Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord. Bano kondi para kulege diza ku mana gaziate. Iruku vala parata. Holy Ghost. If you're preaching a ministry, okay, you're preaching a church, suddenly, from nowhere, from nowhere, the church just crumble. The church just fall. What I mean by the church just fall? Problem just enter the church. Or either there is a fight or something in the church and people just leave the church. You're preaching a church. Nothing just happened. The church just fall from nowhere. Okay? When such a thing happens to you as a pastor, I want you to listen very, very attentively because what I'm going to share with you right here in this number three will save a lot of pastors, not just pastors. It will save a lot of business men and women. It will save traders. If you're operating a ministry, a church, suddenly from nowhere, the church just fall. Nothing happens. You know within you, you didn't sin. Because we know in ministry that most of the things that make problems to come into a church is maybe a priest is living in a secret sin and God wants him. He doesn't want to listen. So some certain things happen for God to use it, you know, to, to redirect his servant to the pathway of life. But you know within you, you did not sin. You know within you, you didn't commit any atrocity. The church just fell from nowhere. There is a witch in that ministry that have sold a secret information of that ministry to the coven. The Bible says that a man's enemies shall be members of his own household. In that Micah that we read, 7-6, a man's enemy an enemy outside cannot come in to operate inside a house. He has to receive or get information from the enemies within. So if such a thing happens to your church, suddenly from nowhere the church just fell. There is a witch operating in that church. That's number one. Number two, it is either a witch through lack of knowledge, someone who lack knowledge, there are people that when you talk about deliverance, they said all oh, these people that call fire, they, talk about blah, blah, blah. they will just criticize anything until when it happens to them, they will now learn lesson. It is either a witch as they have brought a coven close to where the church is and they started operating. Okay, if you see such a thing in your ministry, these two things have happened. It is either you have a within enemy who is a witch in the church or you have 
a covenant close to your church. And can I tell you this? This is what witches usually do. When they want to make a ministry to crumble, they want to make a ministry to fall, they will come spiritually and rock feces. They will rock feces around the church environment. What I mean by feces, they will, they will rock sheets. You know, shit smells. So once they rub that spiritually, when a church that does that, that, that the fire, the fire has gone down. A church that the fire has gone down and they open a tunnel to the enemies. So when they rub these sheets around the church environment spiritually, people will leave. That's what they do to scare people away from a ministry. So I pray for every ministry that is undergoing every witchcraft operation. Let the witchcraft operation be destroyed tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I destroy every witchcraft operation in your ministry, in your territory. I destroy every witchcraft operation. Any man of God that is undergoing, that is going through witchcraft operation, that witches and wizards I constantly afflict your ministry. Any man of God, any pastor that the enemies want to send you out of ministry, you are originally called, you are genuinely called by God, and the enemies are fighting to make sure they crumble that work of God in your hand. They crumble the work of God in your days. I command the plans of the enemies. I command that witchcraft oppression in your ministry to be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command it to be destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command it to be destroyed. Every witchcraft oppression in your territory, in your ministry, any coven that have been brought, that have been brought close to your ministry, any witch in your church that has given an information that has, or that has unleashed a vital information about your ministry to an outside witch. And they began to use that to afflict you. I command their operation to scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus. I command the operation to scatter. I command the operation to scatter. Any ministry, any church, any outreach, any fellowship that is being tormented, afflicted by witchcraft operation. I command that operation to cease now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have been seriously afflicted. You feel like giving up. You feel like leaving ministry. You feel like leaving church work. Let me tell you, there is an oppression. Of, there is a satanic oppression around you. I command that oppression, that witchcraft oppression, around your ministry, within your ministry. I command that person inside causing this trouble, selling the ministry information to the witchcraft woman. I command them to be cursed. I command them to die. I bring judgment against them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I set free different churches and ministries. I set them free. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I also want to say this, number four. If you mistakenly fall into sin, this is also for pastors. Maybe you mistake, mistakenly, you mistakenly fell into sin. Okay. You fell into sin mistakenly, rather, and uh, the kind of a sin of immorality, okay, with a lady, okay. There are people who, who fell into sin with some ladies that they didn't know that these ladies are witches as pastors, okay. These things happen um, uh, among some pastors, not, all, all of, not everybody. But if you mistakenly fall into the sin of immorality with a lady who has the spirit of witchcraft, who is a witch? What they do is that when you fall into the sin of fornication with them, they will carry your spam. Okay? They will take your spam. They will take it to the witchcraft covenant and they will put it in a clay pot. They will store your spam in a clay pot. Now, if you have committed the sin of immorality with someone and you didn't know the person is a witch, suddenly, suddenly, your ministry can fall. You will know that there is, once you see that fall in a ministry, know that that person you slept with have sold out your blood because your life, your blood, 
your life is in your spam. Your spam carries carries your gene, carries your life. Okay? So witchcraft cannot operate in your life if they don't have an access to one and information. If they don't have an access to, to your property, something that belongs to you, to your body, okay, just like this palm I'm talking about, okay? So, once a liko mana gracia ku bana krasitare, a loco mana gracia ku vele praku vele tezitarata. So, once they have an access to this palm, they will take this palm to the coven. That can make your ministry to fall instantly. So once you see such fall, know that a witch is, of, is in operation in your ministry. A witch is in operation. You've been afflicted by witchcraft. So once you see that, take note as a priest. Okay? Another way you can know that there is a witchcraft operation around you. When you constantly see yourself in your village that you have left many years to the city, Seeing yourself in places like old junctions, old, old junctions in your village, village market, village square, you see yourself in the village bush, you see yourself in the village tree, you see yourself in the village old school, the old school in the village. Once you start having such dreams, my brother, my sister, there is a witchcraft operation around you. Anytime you see yourself, you see constant, you constantly have such dreams. You see yourself in your old village, in the old street in your village. I'm not talking about something that happens once. You something that constantly that happens constantly. Okay. I'm not saying that God sometimes don't take people to the village to, to show them things, but I'm talking about something that happens constantly. You see yourself in this old market in your village. You see yourself in this, in this old village square. You see yourself in this old street. You see yourself in the old uniform in the school you used to attend. Constantly, once you start having such dreams, there is a witchcraft operation. They are operating around you. I wanted to take note of that. So we are still on this teaching. How to know if there is a witch operating in your territory. If there is a witch around you. These are the things you will used to know. Number six, if you see yourself on rack, it is a sign that witchcraft manipulation, it is a sign of the witchcraft manipulation because witches wear racks in the common. When you constantly, constantly see yourself wearing rack, all the time you see yourself on rack in the dream, you see yourself wearing rack, my brother, a witch is attacking you, a witch has been afflicting you. You have to go for deliverance. You have to begin to pray. Because Joshua was a priest of God. And the Bible made us to understand that Satan wore him, put a rack, put a sackcloth on him. <laughs> Joshua was a prophet of God. But Satan afflicted him. The devil afflicted him. The devil afflicted him. He put on him a sackcloth. He put on him. There are so many people on that sackcloth. There are so many people on the sackcloth. Once you see yourself on sackcloth in your dream, you see yourself on rack. There is a witchcraft operation around you. And I pray for you tonight. Every witchcraft operation around you that have put sackcloth on you to afflict your finances, to attack your finances, to attack your visions, to attack your revelation, to attack your health. Let that rack be set on fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you keep seeing yourself in chain. In a dark room. You see yourself on chain. You see you constantly see yourself on chain. In a dark room. Or under a tree. Chain. You, are, you see yourself under a tree. Or beside a tree. You are on that chain. You are on chain. Or rope. They tie rope on you. There is a witchcraft operation around you. So when you see yourself tied. In a place. You know, you are, you are physically, you are not in, you are not on chain. You are not or whether on chain or in chain, okay? There is a witchcraft operation around you. You are not supposed to be on chain. You are not supposed to be chained, okay, in your dream. You are supposed to be free because the dream gives birth to everything that happens in the physical. The dream, what you see in your dream is the real you, is the real you. So when you see these things, know that there is an operation of the evil one. 
around you. Praise the Lord. Father, I cover this atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. I cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. I cover the viewers with the blood of Jesus. I cover the listeners with the blood of Jesus. I cover your children with the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus. Number eight, if any time in the night your room becomes very heavy and you feel the presence of fear, a witch is in operation around you. Maybe the way as I am, I am now, I think that the time now should be, should be, is 1.31 a.m. Nigerian time. Okay, like this time, you begin to feel heaviness around your room. Anytime you wake up, you feel fear. It's like fear grips you. It's like there is, a, you feel the presence of someone. There is an oppression of an evil person. There is, there is a witchcraft oppression around you. You are not supposed to feel that way. Because where light is, darkness does not stay there. So there is an oppression of darkness. You have to be very smart. You have to be very spiritually smart. When you begin to feel that presence, you feel that presence. The presence of God is not supposed to bring fear to you. It's supposed to bring joy. It's supposed to bring gladness. But when you begin to constantly feel a presence that makes you to be afraid, to be frightened, there is an oppression of the evil one. And I command that oppression of witchcraft in your environment, in your house, to be destroyed. I send them out now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And also, if you wake up in the morning and you see some marks on your body, a witch is attacking you. So a lot of people see this. A lot of people see this. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You wake up in the morning and you see some mark on your body. You know, the mark, you don't know where the mark came from. You slept very well, but you woke up to see some mark. There is an attack of witchcraft around you, and you have to fight back. And I pray today, anyone undergoing or going through this witchcraft mark, they put this mark on your body to frustrate your effort, to frustrate your advancement, to frustrate your talents, your potential, to close your doors, to frustrate your gifting. I command that hand to wither and die in the mighty name of Jesus. That hand that had been tearing your body, I command the hand to wither. That hand that has been tearing your body, that has been afflicting you, I command that witch to die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We send them to hell in the name of Jesus. Number 10, if you see an old woman who constantly cook for you in the dream. <laughs> and she keeps giving you meat to eat. My dear, a witch is operating. It's an oppression around your territory. You see yourself. You see yourself in the dream all the time. You see a particular woman cooking for you. They will cook very wonderful meal, food, meat. They will feed you. They will feed you. You'll be eating. Eat meat in the dream all the time. Because once they do that, they release what is called the spirit of heaviness upon you. They make you to be spiritually heavy that you cannot pray. They make you to be spiritually blind that you cannot see. They make you to be spiritually dead that you cannot hear. They make you to begin to carry sicknesses you're not supposed to carry. They afflict you once they start giving you that meat in the dream. My dear, you have to begin to pray. When I pray for you, if you've been having this dream, if you've been seeing this dream, I command that woman that has been cooking for you, I command that man, that evil chef, that evil cook that have been cooking for you, I command them to die in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number 11, if you suddenly see yourself fall sick with a very chronic sickness that defies medical applications, most especially when a test is done, is being done, yet nothing is seen. And most especially when the sickness makes you to start spending money unnecessarily. Suddenly you fall sick. You don't know where the sickness is coming from. You go to the hospital, they carried out the test, they carried out the test, and they didn't see anything. Yet, they will prescribe drugs for you. You go and buy the drugs. You start spending money, you start buying drugs. Yet you're not feeling too well. The witchcraft power, the witch, the wizard, those stubborn witches and wizards, they have afflicted your body with sickness. 
once you see that there is a witchcraft oppression around you, once you see that, suddenly you just fall sick. You carry out all the tests. Nothing has been seen. The doctor said they can't see anything. There is an oppression. I cause every witchcraft oppression going on in your body, afflicting your body with sickness. I cause every witchcraft oppression that has afflicted your body with sickness. I cause every witchcraft oppression that has afflicted your body with unnecessary disease. I curse, I place a curse on every witchcraft oppression that has afflicted your body. I curse that witch. I curse that witch. I place a curse on them. Be cursed now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I set you free. I set you free by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of a testimony. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they loved not their lives even unto death. Thank you Holy Spirit for setting your people free. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Lord for the freedom of your people. Thank you Holy Spirit of God for setting your people free. Thank you for freedom. That man that has been sick, that has been afflicted, I set you free tonight. That woman that has been afflicted, I set you free tonight. That child, that baby boy, that boy, that girl that has been afflicted, you don't know where the sickness is coming from. You just begin to carry sickness you were not born with. Even if you were born with it, tonight I set you free. Be free from that sickness. Be free from that sickness. Be free from that disease and relieve the hand of God upon you. Be free. I set you free in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I cover your healing with the blood of Jesus. Your healing is permanent. No power will contend with your healing in Jesus' name. Number 12, constant nightmare. You know? You constantly have nightmare. You see people pursuing you. You see masquerade attacking you. You see someone you know. Sometimes they can use the face of the person you know to attack you. So you have to be very spiritually sensitive. Otherwise, you will accuse the wrong person. You see, you see, you see masquerade attacking you. You see, you constantly see this nightmare. You see, you know, like, 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 like masquerade attacking you. You see all kinds of things. There is once you start seeing these things. You start seeing this nightmare. Start having this nightmare, serious nightmare. You see all kinds of contentions in your dream. Know that there is a witchcraft oppression around you. Okay, when you see all these things, which, you know, masquerade for showing you. You see someone shooting you with guns. You see someone bringing matches to court you. You know, all these things are proofs, are evidence that there is an oppression of darkness. There is an oppression of evil presence around you. And tonight, I set you free from every wicked nightmare. I set you free from every satanic nightmare in the mighty name of Jesus. Number 13, if you constantly see yourself losing opportunities, you will go with people. They will all get the job, but you will lose the opportunity. You know, like near success syndrome, all these things. When Once you see near success syndrome in operation, and when you constantly lose money, money comes, you don't know what you use the money for. You know, you experience bad luck everywhere. Once you start seeing all these things I, mean, I, I, I have mentioned in this number 13, okay? You constantly lose opportunities. You see yourself losing money. You will keep money in your house. You're with your wife. Your wife is not a thief, but the money will just vanish from nowhere. You know, you constantly lose money. They will pay you your salary, but before you know it, you don't know what you use the money for. I, 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 I prayed for a man one day in Enugu, Enugu State, that man was a very rich man, but something happened to that man that was beyond him. That is why you need a prophet of God. Keep a close relationship with your prophet. It will help you. It will help you. While I was preaching inside the car, I was traveling to Enugu, and the man was also inside that car with, with his wife. And as I was ministering, and the Holy Ghost led me, and I began to speak through word of knowledge, and I addressed what the man was passing through. Once that man will finish his contract, 
once he will be paid from the contract he executed, he will go from one beer parlor to another buying drinks from for people. <laughs> he will be buying drinks for people. He will buy drinks for people from one beer parlor to another. Before he would go home, he would just go home with peanut. This thing was happening to this man all the time. Oh, the wife cried that day. And when I came out of the car, the man also alighted from the same place. He said, sir, you have told me something that I can't let you go. While you were ministering, you mentioned my case. I saw a big man knelt down on the road and said, please pray for me. I am dying. I am dying. How did I know that man is a rich man? While we were there, he called his son to bring his car. My dear, when I saw the car, <laughs> you know, cars that are born again. <laughs> when I saw the car they brought to pick me, the man told me his experience that once he is paid, his contract money is given to him. He doesn't know what will happen to him. If he's not paid, it's normal. Once he's paid, money just come in to his account. He will misbehave from one beer parlor to another. He will be spending the money. He will be buying drinks for people. People will be drinking. The wife, the wife will be looking for him. They won't see him until when he finished spending the money. Sometimes he will finish spending the money before he will go home. Sometimes he will spend it and just peanut will be left. And I prayed for him on that road. That was the end of that case. I pray for you tonight. I pray for you tonight. Whoever that is making you to lose opportunities. Whoever that is making you to lose opportunities. Whoever that has been stealing your money, following you, monitoring you, giving you tears day and night, subjecting you to tears, subjecting you to tears, to cry you're not supposed to cry. I raise my hand in victory as a prophet of God. I command that witch to die in the mighty name of Jesus. I command that witch to die. I command that witch who ever in his whatsoever that is empowering him or her, whether it's a family witch or a societal witch or an environmental witch or a religious witch, whatever kind of witch they are, I command them to die. I bring the judgment of God against them and I command their time to come to an end now in the mighty name of Jesus. Be set free from that weakness. Be set free from that oppression. Be set free from that bondage. Be set free from that chain in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Number 14, if you purchase a new car, take note, take note of what I'm going to say. You purchase a new car, a very new car, and suddenly the car starts having problems that are beyond your control. A new car, you just bought a new car with new engine, tear rubber. From nowhere, the car started having problems. My dear, an evil person is living within you. Someone has touched that car. I remember a story of a family where they bought a car and there was a young man that lived with them. Every time that car would break down, and one day through the ministration of heavy prayer, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, let the flame of fire fall tonight. Let the flaming sword fall tonight. Let the flaming sword fall tonight. Let the flaming sword fall tonight. The atmosphere, the atmosphere, I arrest every oppression, every oppression which is not of God, which is not of God, I arrest you tonight. I cut you into pieces. I release Michael and the seven princes of heaven to destroy them with flaming sword of fire. I release ten, I deploy ten thousands of God's angels to descend everywhere here in this territory, in all the junctions, in all the runabout. I suspend every oppression of any coven. I suspend them tonight. Lord, no drinking of blood. I scatter their coven tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord, is in operation tonight. Jesus Christ is in operation tonight. Jesus Christ is ministering through me tonight. No power can operate. Ye are gods and all of you are the children of the Most High. We are gods here on earth. I have the dominion mandate. I operate on the fullness of that dominion through redemption. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have been translated by the power of redemption in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You bought a new car. Suddenly, dear rubber car, you start seeing all this. The car just broke down. You take it to the mechanic. They don't know what is wrong with the car. There was a family like that. The young man that was living in that compound was operating until prayer was offered and it confessed that they used to take this car to the coven to go and drive. So they are driving the car in the coven that they cannot drive the car in the physical. <laughs> they drive the car in the coven, but physically they cannot drive the car. And she was sent out of the family. I pray for you tonight. If you're, on that, if you're going through what I've just said, I command whoever that has been driving your car in the witchcraft coven to die in the mighty name of Jesus. I command him or her to die in the mighty name of Jesus. Number 15. We are living in a society where goats and sheep and cow will be dedicated to idols and then they will use their meat to cook for guests. Many of the people who are spiritual who have spiritual problems in my city is as a result of what they eat and the people they relate with. In my place, if you don't want to be easily bewitched, you don't eat too much ceremony, uh, ceremonial food or ceremony food, food that is shared in different ceremonies and party food. Take them home, boil them with the pot covered. Boil it very well. Okay, what I mean by that is this. There are so many people like in this city where I am, God opened my eyes and I saw some things. I'm very careful with what I eat in this city. Very careful. Very, very careful. Very, very careful. Many of the people who have been afflicted, who are possessed in this city, are at the result of what they ate. We are living in a city where they will dedicate goats, ram, sheep, how to idols in the midnight they will now use it to cook for people to get people's destinies to steal their money to steal their efforts to give them sicknesses that's this that's a society we are living in that they will they will they will they will dedicate these animals to which which witches to 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 idols they will now use it to cook for people in a ceremony. Many of the parties that you attend. Do you know? Do you know the kind of meat that you're eating? You eat anyhow. You go Mr. A's house. You eat. Mr. B's house. You eat. Mr. C's house. You eat. No matter how you know people. Be careful with what you eat. For the days are evil. Be careful. Be careful. When you suddenly see your finances being afflicted. Be careful. Be careful. You were doing very well. Suddenly, you're no longer doing very well. You go from one place to another, attending parties everywhere, ceremonies everywhere. They want to go here. You, you go. You, we share uniform. You wear. You go there. They give food. You eat. Be careful. The days are evil. So many people have been bewitched as a result of this. In my community, there was something that happened in my community many years ago. A young girl confessed. And they were asking this girl, how were you bewitched? The girl said that the grandmother put the put this witch, this witchcraft stuff. I don't know how. Oh Jesus, the world is wicked. A grandmother bewitched her granddaughter. What a wicked world. Bewitched this girl, put this thing in a local soup for this girl. And immediately this girl ate it, the eyes was open. As the girl wanted to shout, there was nobody. She just hit the girl's mouth. And the demons entered into the girl. That's how the, that, that girl was bewitched. So when they asked this girl, when the operation started, they started using this girl to pray. And the day that God set this girl free, this girl said something amazing. He said, when they give you, they asked her, what if they give someone food and the person didn't eat it? He said, when they give you food, this witch, any food where they put witchcraft, 
when if that food is bewitched, when you take it home, you say, cover that food and boil it. Put it in a pot and boil it. He said, as that witchcraft, witches are afraid of fire, they are afraid of heat. As you boil that food, you boil it, you boil it, you will see the, the, the cover of the pot will pop open. You will hear some meow, the sound will go out. That is to tell you that something, that food, was poisoned with witchcraft. With that, po that food, that food, that food, that food, that food was poisoned with witchcraft spell. There was a witchcraft spell in that food. Okay? If they give you food and you suddenly eat it, once they call your name in the night, you will answer. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You will answer. Be careful with what you eat. Be careful. But if they give you that food, you did not eat it. I know of a young, a little baby. He was given a, a biscuit. The friend gave a biscuit. That is why you must teach your children what they eat. Not to collect, not to collect food from their friends or eatable things from their friends at school. This little girl gave biscuit to this girl. And this girl was from, you know, a church, a Christian, from a Christian family. Maybe that time the parents were praying for the girl. So the girl forgot the biscuit inside her school bag. In the night, they were hearing people playing things. They were hearing people singing. The parents, they woke up and said, ah, where is this song coming from? Where are these people singing? Where? They were looking for where they are playing. They went outside. They didn't see anything. They didn't see anybody. People were only for them to begin to look for where the sound was coming from. And they trace it to the girl's school back. When they open it, the biscuit has turned to human zen. So that was the hand. What they wanted to bewitch the girl with. Before you know it, that hand will start operating in the family. I pray for your children. I pray for you. May your children not be bewitched in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for your children. I pray for you. May you not eat food that are dedicated to idols. May you not eat it in the mighty name of Jesus. May you not eat food that have been dedicated to idols in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number 16. Sometimes when you keep hearing a strange voice within and, and, and without you telling you to kill yourself, watch something is fishing. And whenever you hear your name being called in a crowded place, like market, place or party or ceremony, do not answer. Find out who the caller is. Okay? So this one, let me explain it. Let me explain this one. Very, very important. Anytime you keep hearing voice telling you, carry that knife, kill yourself, cut yourself, carry that knife, kill yourself, cut yourself, there is a witchcraft attack. There is a witch operation, an operation of witches within you. Once you keep hearing that voice telling you, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself, the dark one is in your territory. The dark one is in your territory. Once you keep hearing any voice telling you, carry that rope, hang yourself, just try it. Try just put the rope in your neck. You keep hearing the voice within you. Be very careful. You have to start praying, destroying witchcraft or preaching in that territory. Because there is a witch that is looking for your blood to drink. And anytime you go to the market or you are in a noisy place and you hear someone call your name, don't just answer. So many people have answered names. They answered ghosts. They answered witchcraft call. You are in a marketplace and you hear someone call your name. Don't answer. Turn and check who the person is before you answer. Some people went to the market. They just heard their names and they answered. And they went home and that was the end of their lives. They slept. They didn't wake up. I pray for you. Whoever that is calling your name. God is supposed to call your name and not the power of this world. I pray for you today. Every caller, wicked caller that is calling your name to take you to the, to the ground beyond, to take you to the land beyond, to take you to the grave, to the early grave, I command their voice to cease 
in the mighty name of Jesus. I set their voice on fire. I set their voice on fire. Every evil voice, I set it on fire. Every evil voice, I set it on fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you all the praise. Father, we give you all the worship. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Lord, for this segment. We are done with the, the second segment of this teaching. The next segment is how to be free from this witchcraft oppression. Father, we thank you for this second segment that I've just ended. Father, we give you all the praise. We cover it with the blood of Jesus as many who are online watching this broadcast. Father, set them free. As many who are going to watch this broadcast later, Father, thank you for setting them free. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for setting them free from the powers of darkness, from every witch travel oppression. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the power of deliverance. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the spirit of deliverance. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for setting them free. The Bible says, our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible made us to understand in the book of 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. He said, he said, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. He said, for this paper, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. But that tonight, I command the works of the devil to be destroyed. Oh, the Bible says in the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 17, upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. I speak deliverance to as many who are afflicted. I speak deliverance to, uh, to as many lives that have been afflicted. I speak deliverance to as many souls that have been lost, snatched by the devil, to as many lives that have been under the affliction of the devil. I speak deliverance to your life right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Viewers all over the world, wherever you're watching me from, from America, be free. Northern America, be free. Southern America, be free. Africa, be free. Europe, be free. United Kingdom, be free. Australia, be free. Russia, be free. Asian countries, be free. North and South America, be free. East and West Africa, be free. Africa, be free. Be free. North and South Africa, be free. Central Africa, be free. East and West Africa, be free. All over the world, be free from every satanic affliction. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So the next segment, which is the third edition of this teaching, is how to be free. How to be free from witchcraft oppression. So after discovering that there is witchcraft oppression in your territory. So the question is, man of God, how can I be set free? How can I be free from this oppression? Number one. Do not share your vital information with people, most especially your destiny, goal, or project. If you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, if you're a kind of a person that talks anyhow, any little thing you want to do, you share with people. My dear, if you want to be free, I know, I know, I know what I'm saying. I have been to a lot of families for family covenant. What it's called uh, family deliverance. I've been to so many cities. <laughs> I'm not speaking at the youth copper. I'm speaking with many years of experience through God. If you want to be free from every witchcraft oppression, live a very secretive life. Don't share your information. Don't share your vital information with people. Just take people by surprise. Anytime you want to do a project, you notice that when you tell people you don't succeed in that project, don't tell anybody again. You want to go on a journey, want to tell people, they will flip that journey, they will cancel the thing. Make sure anytime you want to do it, don't share that secret with anybody. Just go ahead and do it and take people by surprise. That is the first advice. That is the first way to freedom information be very very careful the way you unleash information 
Be very, very careful. There are most testimonies you don't need to give until when the thing happens. There are most testimonies that are not matured for you to give. It's not every time. Something has not, just, has not yet matured. You just testify. There is nothing wrong with that. But let me tell you, there is time for everything under the sun. Okay? So be very, very careful with information. The way you unleash your information about your destiny and your project. Number two. If you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, you must learn how to pray this type of prayers. I'm going to tell you. If you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, if you really want to be free, you know you are afflicted with witchcraft oppression, and you want to be free, I want to teach you how to pray this type of prayer. Number one, learn how to pray long prayer. Long prayer. Let me tell you, people that pray long prayer, Satan cannot afflict them. Go and find out. People that pray long prayer, people that pray prayers like six hours, eight hours, it is very difficult for witches to operate or to afflict them. Number two types of prayer you need to pray. Learn how to pray night prayers. What I mean by night prayer, zero hour prayer from 12 midnight. From 12 midnight, you begin it. Learn how to pray because I'm teaching you three types of prayer that will make you to be free from witchcraft oppression. Number one, I've said it, learn how to pray long prayer. Number two is learn how to pray night prayers. 12 midnight, you begin to pray. You begin to pray. You can pray till 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. When you are a kind of a person that prays night prayer, even if you don't pray long in the day, but you can pray night prayers, it will be very difficult for witches to operate or to afflict you. Number three, learn how to pray intermediate prayer. What I mean by intermediate prayer is this. You leave, you, you are in your house, you pray for 30 minutes. You leave your house to your place of work, you pray for 30 minutes in your place of work. Tap, tap, tap prayer. Before you leave your place of work, you're going to on break. In that break place, you pray for maybe like 20 minutes. Before you leave that place, you, you are moving to another area. You just pray for 10 minutes. Learn how to pray intermediate prayer. Prayer that confuse the enemy. They will be asking questions. This man, is he a madman? Once you know how to pray, even if you, don't, if you don't pray in the night, you don't pray long prayer, but you can pray intermediate prayer. It will be very difficult for them to afflict you. These are the three types of prayer you need to pray if you want to be free. I just mentioned the first one. I said, be very careful with your information. The information, be very careful. Don't share your destiny information with people. Be very careful with the way you unleash information to people. You can share your information. You don't know that you're sharing your information with an enemy. So be very careful with an information. Number two is this prayer I just talked about. Learn how to pray long prayer. Learn how to pray night prayer. Learn how to pray intermediary or intermediate prayer. Tap, tap, tap prayer. You move from this pole to that pole. You just start speaking in tongues. You speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. Before you enter that car to go to, to the next junction, as you are dropping, you just speak in tongues. You just speak in tongues for five minutes. When you pray this kind of prayers, you confuse the enemies. It will be very difficult for witches, for witches to operate in your life. Now, number three. Live a secret fasting life. Do not shout about it. Live, you see, let me tell you something. Witches, witches, they live a secret life. Witches can be very friendly, open, but spiritually, they are very secretive. So, you must not open your spiritual information to people. There are people that you want to fast. You tell everybody you want to fast. Before you know it, the enemies will pollute that fasting. Okay? Live a very secretive fasting life. You can leave your house. You did not tell anybody. You just tell your wife, I'm coming. Before you know, you go to somewhere, you begin to fast and pray about a particular thing. By the time you're back, the things that the enemies plotted against you have been scattered. 
But by the time you tell people, oh, tomorrow morning I'll be fasting, before you know it, in the night they begin to release their witchcraft venoms to make sure they scatter that fasting. So live a very secretive fasting life. If you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, live. It's not every fasting you tell your family. There are most fasting you just carry your back, you tell your wife, I'm coming. Because there are most women who cannot keep their mouth shut. This one will come, oh, my husband has gone to uh, the other community to go and pray. This one will come, oh, my husband has gone to so-so place to go and pray. Before you know it, they pass information to an enemy. So learn how to live a very secretive fasting life. So this is very, very important. Number four, number four, do not, do not marry so much to your bed, okay? When you give yourself to so much you know, to your bed, you will constantly sleep. So what I mean here is that it is not every time you sleep in your bed. If you want to be free, be very, you know, it's not every time you sleep on bed. If you see great men of old that God used them so much, they did not understand their bed. They were not married to their bed. There are sometimes you need to go and sit down like this on your seat till daybreak. I know sometimes you're going to feel somehow there are sometimes you just need to go and just lie down a little. I, I, I know this man of God that we used to pray together. Very rare before that man will lie down on the bed. You will see him lie down on the floor. He will just use pillow and lay his head. And when I asked him one day, he told me a secret. <laughs> he told me a secret. He said, if you want to have a clarity of revelation when you finish praying in the night, he said, don't easily go to your bed to sleep. I learned so much from that man. And I practice that thing. The thing has really helped me. Because sometimes, you see, some people say, I want to wake up to pray around 12 midnight and they go to sleep in the bed only to wake up around 3 a.m. So don't sleep all the time in your bed. I'm not saying that you shouldn't sleep on your bed, okay? But don't marry your bed, okay? Don't marry your bed. Number five, do not eat late at night all the time. Avoid being too heavy. Okay, don't overload yourself in the night because too much of food, late night food, will weigh down your spirit. Eat little and eat light. Okay, don't eat late at night. Don't carry heavy food and eat late in the night. Heavy food can block your spiritual visions, rather, it can block your spiritual ears. Heavy food will weigh you down. Once you load yourself with that food, many people, once they eat late at night, before you know it, you wake up 5 a.m. in the morning. So don't eat late at night because in the night, you know you're going to study. In the night, you know you're going to wake up to address some certain things because you know most of this witchcraft oppression, they carry out this AV witchcraft oppression in the night. So you must wake up to begin to address some certain spiritual thing. So don't eat late. Avoid late night hour food. Avoid it. If you want to eat in the night, maybe you came back very late. Eat little. Eat little. Eat little. Okay? Do not engage someone from afar on a sexual conversation. Which is work with information. In the midnight, don't wake up and begin to talk with someone on phone. And you are talking about sexual things to begin to commit. As you're speaking about those words with the person on phone, talking about sexual things, it forms an aura. It forms a spiritual aura. You may not see it. I'm explaining this to you because over the years following the Lord, God showed us most of these things. So we have to teach the world. Don't begin to go into sexual conversation with someone at late hour. Or in the night before you go to bed. Which is the pass through information. Information at their doorways. Information at their platforms. They use information as a platform to unleash wickedness. So you have to be very careful with what you say in the night. The kind of people you call in the night before you go to bed. The kind of conversation you do. So be very careful about it. Okay. Number seven. Live a life of taking communion and believe so much in the power of communion table, which is drink so much blood to stay alive and strong. Sprinkle your communion and also take it. 
Let me tell you something about communion table. A lot of believers, when I see churches criticize communion, I just look at them. I'm sorry to use this word. They are just foolish about spiritual things. They are foolish. Let me tell you, every day that witches meet in the coven, they drink blood. They must drink blood. The life, the Bible says in the book of Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11, it said the life of every human is in the blood. So which, which is they understand this mystery. When they meet in the coven, they drink blood to stay alive. They drink blood to renew their, their strength, to renew their age. To, they, can be, they can be old physically, but spiritually, they are young girls. They are young boys. So make sure you take your communion. Don't joke with communion. Make sure if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, make sure you take your communion all the time. Make sure you sprinkle communion around your territory because witches, they are afraid of the blood of Jesus. See, let me tell you something. When we say the blood of Jesus, what happens is that the blood comes so much that it covers them that they cannot see anywhere to pray. When blood comes, everywhere becomes slippery. It covers everywhere. When we say the blood of Jesus. So when you take communion, you are renewing your spiritual strength. You're renewing your spiritual body. You renew the inner man that the witchcraft sicknesses cannot feed on. So make sure, make sure you take communion all the time and make sure you sprinkle it. I remember one of our churches in, in, my, in my state, the man of God told me every night when they wake up in the morning, they will see foots, you know, foots of dogs. Dogs will come and begin to run around the church. They will come outside in the night. They won't see dogs. When they go outside, dogs will be barking. Dogs will be barking. I was in that church. I don't want to mention the name of the church for security papers. It was a church that understand the mystery of communion table. So every night, these dogs will be barking. And the thing was bringing problems to the church. There will be trouble in church. And the man of God came and spoke to them, ministered to them, taught them about communion. And one night, the man of God woke up carried communion and sprinkle the communion bread, the communion blood, sprinkle it around the church. When they woke up in the morning, they saw two dogs died. Two dogs died. And when those two dogs died in the community, in the community, two notable witch, witches, two notable, notable chiefs died just because of a man understood the power of the communion table. So if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, make sure, if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, make sure you don't with your communion is very, very important. Number eight, study more of God's word and when you, and, and when praying, use more of God's word in your prayers. Use more of God's word don't joke with the word of God if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression. Don't joke with the word of God. Study the word of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved. A workman, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. The Bible said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are light. The Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was with God from the beginning. All things were made by him. Without him was nothing made that was made. In him was life. The life was the light of men. And the light shined in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. So the word of God is light unto us. The Bible said, He sent his word unto Jacob, and it lighted unto all Israel. When the word of God comes, it brings light. The Bible said, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That is what the word of God can do. The Bible said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the word of God, make sure you dwell on the word if you want to be free from witchcraft oppression because witches cannot, they cannot trample on the path where the word of God is in oppression. Okay? So make sure you use the word of God all the time. Number nine, it says, speak more in tongues when you are praying and don't shout. Let me tell you one thing about prayer. If you want to be a very, a very spiritual prayer warrior, 
Don't pray, shouting, pray, pray. Wah, 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 wah. Everybody in the compound will hear that you're praying. You are still a baby Christian. You are a baby Christian. I have lived in territories. I have lived in places. I have lived in compound where they were. They were heavy oppression of these people. I know the way God used me to deal with them. The last one that died was not just a witch. He was a witch and he was also in Oboni. I know the way that man died. I will never forget it. I was not God. In, in God over the years, God has taught me how to pray heavy prayers. I will not shout. I'm inside the house. I won't shout. Anytime you pray like that, you come out in the morning, you greet someone, they didn't answer you. Know that something happened in the night. So pray more in tongues. Pray more in tongues and very secretive prayer. Don't shout. Which is they know these people. They know those who have spiritual hierarchy. When I see some believers, believers, they shout. Every little prayer they want to pray. Wow, 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 wow. If you want to, if you want to, if you want to succeed in this world, you must understand the power of secret information. I'm not talking about when we pray as a church. When we pray as a church, people can shout, they can pray, no problem. But when you are praying alone, when you are praying alone, you can stay inside your house for two weeks. Nobody knows you around. They don't hear your voice. By the time you come out, Things have been destroyed in the kingdom of darkness. They begin to ask questions. Where, where, listen to me. Which, which is they live a very secretive life. And when you want to live life with them, also live a secretive life. Before you know it, you will finish seven days fasting and prayers. Nobody knew about it. As you are coming out, they are leaving the territory for you. You won't shout. People will begin to say, ah, the man, not nah, juju man, not nah, nah, this, not nah, that. He's carrying juju, he's carrying this, he's a fetish man. There is no fetish anywhere. You're carrying something that is bigger than what they carry. So that is why they are confused. So pray a secretive prayer. Speak in tongues all the time. Speak in tongues all the time. The Bible says that the people that speak in tongues, they speak mysteries unto God. So when you speak in tongues in your prayers, you speak mysteries. But I cover this place with the blood of Jesus. I release the blood of Jesus in this territory. I release the blood of Jesus in this territory. I release the blood of Jesus in this territory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number 10, be very careful with the kind of movies you watch at night before going to bed. Wrong info, share, start, wrong info, start a platform for witchcraft oppression. Be very careful the kind of movies you watch in the night. Because once you watch those movies and they begin to store wrong information into your mind, your mind is the doorways, is your soul. Your mind is the doorway for your soul. So it can, it can become a platform for witchcraft oppression. Once they come, they know that your mind has been defiled. They can easily operate through your mind. So be very careful the kind of movies you watch in the night before you go to bed. Before you go to bed, make sure you open up your mind to spiritual things, things that will build your spirit, that will energize your soul to listen to your spirit. Praise the Lord. So do not joke with the power of the anointing oil. If you want to be free from witchcraft oppression, do not joke with the power of the anointing oil. Always minister the anointing oil on yourself, on your family, and on your building, on your apartment. You see, I, I went to a particular, a particular church to preach, and they said, we don't believe in anointing oil. I look at them, I said, they are just foolish. They are foolish because something that is bigger than them has not hit them. The day what is bigger than you hit you, you will believe everything that this word of God, that this Bible, that this word of God talks about. Before we were born, we were born to see this word. And some of us, we will leave this word of God remains forever. Do not joke with the power of the anointing oil. It's very, very important. Do not joke with the power of the anointing oil. Do not joke with it. Always minister. 
Look at what happened to the children of Israel when they were about leaving Egypt. That very night that the destructive angel was about passing through the land, God told them to use the blood, the blood of the lamb, the sheep they were killing, to put it on their lintels as the destructive angel came. You will see the blood. The Bible said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Anoint your lintels, anoint your house, anoint yourself, anoint your children. Constantly anoint them all the time. Speak over them. Do not joke with the anointing oil. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. Another thing I want to say here is that in the night, in the night, if you can play slow worship songs or hymns in the night, do not play it too loud, but within the confinement of your room, demons don't like worship songs because worship songs are platform for angelic oppression. The same way secular songs are doorways for demonic oppression. If you play worship songs in your environment as you go to bed, you play worship songs, demons, it scares them away. You know, worship songs, hymns, you play them in the night. The songs that are just played, you see angels will be moving around where you are. It will be difficult for witches to operate in your territory. It will be very difficult for witches to operate in your territory. Okay? So, so seek the help of God through your prophet. Keep a close relationship with your prophet. Make sure you don't joke with your prophet. Make sure. You don't joke with your prophet. Make sure you don't joke with your prophet. Make sure. Keep a close relationship with your prophet. So into your prophet. Call them all the time. Have the words of prayer with them all the time. And I want to show you this. Number, 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 I think number 14. Okay, number 14. I want to show you how to enchant psalms in the night. A lot of people don't know what Psalms are. It's very, it's, it, it bleeds my heart when I see believers that have this Bible. They don't know what, what is in this Bible. It bleeds my heart. That a bony man will know what is in the Bible. That most Christians, it bleeds my heart. That the wicked one will know how to use this Bible to release a spirit to go and kill another man somewhere. But a believer does not know how to use this Bible. It bleeds my heart. It's be, the Bible says, because you lack knowledge, I have rejected you. We must not lack knowledge. He said, my people perish. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. My people perish for lack of knowledge. You must, in, in this life, if you lack anything, don't lack knowledge. Let me tell you something. You see Psalms. You see Psalms of David. Psalms of David are one of the most dangerous weapons that God has given to believers. David wrote some of those Psalms in the forest, in the place where he was traveling. Do you know what is in Psalms? Some people don't know how to chant Psalms. I'm going to teach you how to use Psalms, how to use Psalms, the kind of Psalms you need to chant. You see, in those days when we were in the war, you see our, our, our great-grandfathers, our fathers, you see them, they will chant, they will pour libation to demons, they will go close to a tree, close to their altar, they will chant, they will chant, they, you will fit, fit with your eyes, with your physical eyes, you will see a spirit will come out from the altar, and yet you don't know how to chant a psalm. It's a pity. That most believers that carry this Bible, they just carry it like a book because they don't know that this is a holy book, this is the word of God. So you must understand how to enchant, how to chant psalm in the night. Okay? You must know how to chant psalm in the night. Let me teach you something. You see this Bible. I was praying one day and God showed me a mystery behind this Bible. You see this Bible. If you open this Bible like this, as I open it, one day I was meditating and I slept up and I saw this Bible, lights, light was shining out from the Bible. And I noticed that an open Bible carries light. Right from that day, I don't close my Bible. It's only when I'm going out. 
But when I'm at home, this Bible is open. If I'm sleeping, if I'm sleeping, I keep this Bible open like this, close to myself. Witches, demons, they are afraid of open Bible. When Jesus finished the 40 days and 40 night fasting, as he went, the Bible said they gave him the book of Isaiah and he opened it. <laughs> the Bible said it opened it and he saw a place that is written, the spirit of the living God is upon me. So when you, when you have an open Bible, a spirit will be upon you. Right from that day, I don't close this Bible. Right from the day that God showed me that revelation, if I'm sleeping and my Bible is close to me, it is open. I keep it open and I sleep, you know, I'll sleep with an open Bible as I'm waking up because this Bible radiates lights. An open Bible radiates light as you're waking up, your eyes is already fixing on a particular verse. God knows you are going to read it as you're waking up, up in the morning. So, don't close your Bible. Don't close it all the time. Make sure this Bible, make sure you have one Bible that is open all the time around you. Okay? Make sure you have an open Bible. So, make sure you have an open Bible around you because an open Bible in the realm of the Spirit radiates light. Okay? Do not use your Bible as a pillow. Some people, they will close their Bible and use it as a pillow. <laughs> One of my daughters told me how she used her Bible to put her head, which is give her pressure. <laughs> Isn't it, sir? Even with my Bible, which is press me, I say, why wouldn't they press you? <laughs> they have to press you because you don't know the mystery of what you're carrying. You don't know the mystery. Do not use your Bible as a pillow, okay? Keep it close to yourself and you can use... Let, now, let me show you. There are Psalms you need to enchant in the night, okay? There are Psalms you need to enchant in the night. Let me tell you. When witches want to enter a room, there is what is called four corners. Just like the whole head is spherical. The Bible, but the Bible talks about the four corners of the earth. The white people say the hell is spiritual, but the word of God says four corners of the earth. Okay, that means spiritually there is what is called four corners in the realm of the spirit. Okay, now when when there is when a witch from the mystery, what I discovered when witches want to invade a building, I want to show you something. They want to invade a building, they move, you will see them move round. They move round walls like this, which is they move round walls. They move round walls. They will come to a crannies. You see this place? They look at the crannies of the house. Okay? You will see them move. They will find a crannies. They will come down from there. Or either they will move to a, 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 a corner. They will never come out like they must find a place that has a four corner. Okay, now there is something I want to teach you tonight. This, this information I want, I want to unleash out tonight is very, very expensive. And I want you to try it. I want you to try it. You see this Bible? You see this Bible? This Bible? You see this Bible? If you open this Bible like this, okay, you look at Psalm 35. Psalm 27, Psalm 71, Psalm 91, Psalm 46, Psalm 121. These are AD Psalms. Every other Psalm is good, but these are Psalms for battles. Psalms that you need to call for help. You know, you're calling for help. You want to, you want God to fight your battles. These Psalms I'm mentioning, Psalm 35, Psalm 27, Psalm 71, 91, 46, 121. Okay, if you carry some 935, you stand like this. You see? You see where I held? This is the nose. You stand here. If you're having a constant witchcraft operation, 
You've been having a constant witchcraft operation. You've been praying, they refuse to go. Begin to enchant some. Face the wall, face the nooks and the crannies of your house like this. You hold the word like this open. You begin to enchant. As you read the psalm, you enchant. As you read the psalm, you read. My walls that move through the four colors of my walls. I am resting with this sound. You begin to enchant the sound. Now, let me show you something. If you enchant this sound, you drop this open Bible, you drop the sound on the floor, you open a bottle. This thing I'm, I'm, I'm teaching you tonight. You may, you may look at it as a child's place, but it's very expensive. It's very expensive. Is very, very expensive. This that I'm showing you tonight, I can also use it to show you how you can dedicate an anointing oil for healing. This same thing I'm talking about. Okay? You, you begin to talk about this Psalm. Like Psalm, Psalm 35. You begin to enchant it because in those days, our great-grandfathers, they were enchanted. They would talk about something. They would roar. Okay? You begin, plead my cause, O oh Lord, with the strike with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Fight against them that fight. You speak to the words. You speak to the words. You speak to the words. You leave this four, this four corner. You go to another four corner. You go to another four corner there. Or you come to this corner. You speak. You speak to the four corners of your building, of your room. You speak. And you leave that psalm open. You leave the psalm. Normally, they use four Bibles to do it. Okay? But I'm going to teach you with one Bible. They use four Bibles to do it. If you want, if you want a witch to set a trap for witches, you can keep the psalm near the nooks and the crannies of that your house. You keep an open bottle. You keep a bottle, just a bottle like this. A breaking bottle, breakable bottles, okay? Put a breakable bottle open like this. You keep it on top of the Bible and you leave it there. They usually do it with four Bibles. You keep four Bibles in the four nooks and the crannies of the house. Anytime, if you are living alone or you have kids or you have families, you tell them not to go around, not to go closer to that thing. Anytime you come and you notice that one of the bottles has fallen. You just kept it. You kept them. You dropped them on top of the Bible. You enchant that psalm. You read the psalm. You read the psalm. You call God for vengeance. You read the psalm. You call God for judgment. You read the psalm. You call God for judgment. You read the psalm. You call God for judgment. As you enchanting the psalm, the spirit behind the psalm, what happened to David? What David experienced? Because every word of God, there is a spirit that is attached. The revelation of Paul, the epistles of Paul, the spirit that God put in Paul, follows the revelation in the episode. So the same thing that happens to David, the victory he had, will begin to enter into the sand. Will begin to come out from the sand. If you keep an open bottle, an empty bottle, breakable bottle, and you come back and discover that one of the bottle has fallen. Know that something is God of mercy. La kwana mana gazita raku vele preku vele krano kuziete liga bano kuvala kazite reke. Ra kwana mana giva la pando ku vele presu tarateli akuzekadi. If you return, you see one of the bottle has fallen. There is nobody in the house. Nobody went to that place. One of the bottles has fallen. Know that something that wanted to drop in your territory has entered inside the bottle. What do you do? You cover that bottle that has fallen. It is either you go and throw it into a river or you dig the ground and put it. You will notice that something will happen in that territory that will amaze you. This is what I'm talking about. We can, I can also show you how to use the psalm to dedicate an anointing oil for healing. That's a teaching for another day. Because people don't study this word. They just read, read this word like a newspaper. 
But those who study this word from page to page, from chapter to chapter, they begin to make references. There is something, a wisdom that will be opened up to you through the Holy Ghost. When you study this word and ask the Holy Ghost to teach you the deep things in his word, he will teach you. There are some things that you are going to see. You will, and when you study the word of God, you lie down, you have an open trance and open visions. You begin to have dreams that are very detailed about God. When you return, you, you will notice that something has entered that bottle that fell. That bottle did not fall on its own. Something that wanted to drop at, you know, anything that goes inside bottle cannot come out. Something can easily go inside bottle, but to come out is a problem. So something spiritual, a force, has entered inside that bottle. So what do you do? You shut the mouth of the bottle, you go and dig the ground and put it. Something that has been afflicting you will just go. Something that has been afflicting you will just pass. So I'm teaching, I have shown you that how to use the sand to, to enchant. And I'm going to show you in another of my vision the power of enchantment of Psalms, the power of enchantment. So I'm going to recommend some things to you. Now, let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. I want to say this, people of God, with all amounts of humility, with all amounts of humility, I want to say this without missing word. I have watched men of God in the case of handling witchcraft witchcraft, you know, delivering people from witches, handling witchcraft cases in this country and outside these cases. Can I tell you the truth? There is one man, I am not a member of his church. I'm not a member of his church. I'm not his brother. But as a man who grew up learning deliverance, because my state where I came from, God raised a lot of prophets in my states with deliverance. God just gave that deliverance to our states. You will see a young man will just wake up and begin to pray very deeply in deliverance. So that's the reason we have a lot of deliverance ministries in my state. Let me tell you this. There is one man I have taken close look at that man in terms of deliverance. Can I tell you? In terms of deliverance, dealing with witches, witchcraft cases, that man was T.B. Joshua. I'm not a member of his church. I'm not a member. He's not my brother. But I celebrate that man as a ghost general. You see that man, T.B. Joshua? Go and watch his early days in ministry. Go and watch his camps. His, just, just Google it. T.B. Joshua's early days in ministry. You will, you will know how to deal with witchcraft cases. You will easily know it. If you have a deliverance ministry, you will easily know it. I know there are a lot of men of God that God has blessed in healing. God has blessed also in deliverance. But you see that man, that man was unique in that very area. I took time to watch his early days in ministry. And I came to a conclusion, no wonder. No wonder people were speaking against this man because he was constantly destroying the works of witches. I'm talking about a man that will call and say, The witches come out. You will see them running out. You will see him disgracing the works of witches and wizards. He disgraced them. Go and watch his early days in ministry. You will know how to handle witchcraft cases. If they send someone to you who has been bewitched, or they send someone to you who is a witch, you know, there are some persons you send someone who is a witch to them, they don't know how the kind of prayers to pray. They don't know how to handle it. Yet they are pastors. They are pastors. So if you don't watch this thing, if you don't listen to these men, follow them, ask questions, you will not know it. Whatever you don't have, go and learn it. Go and learn it from another person that has that thing. Swallow your pride. Go and learn it. That man of God, T.B. Joshua, was, Prophet T.B. Joshua, was one man that I studied his deliverance ministry. It was very fierce. He has fierce deliverance ministry. So fierce. That man, I recommend 
his early days in ministries video to any man who wants to understand how to handle witchcraft cases. Because let me tell you the truth. As long as you are a man of God, you are a pastor, pastoring a church, pastoring a congregation, don't, don't feel that you'll be free from witchcraft attack. You cannot be free. You can, they must want to attack your church. But when God has given you that wisdom, God has given you that spiritual wisdom, that, that code, how to handle it, you will know that any time they come against your church, they will be disgraced. They will be disgraced. Do you know how many churches that these people have closed down? Because most of these religious men, they lack knowledge. I see some people, they criticize some churches who believes in the anointing oil, who believes in communion, who believes in calling Holy Ghost fire. They just criticize them. I, I look at them and say, you people don't know anything. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. As long as you are a man of God operating a church, you are open to an attack from the enemy's kingdom. But let me tell you something. As long as God is by our side, victory is sure. On this journey, as we journey through the earth, victory is sure. So I recommend that man of God video for you on this very teaching, how to know a witch and how to deal with them, how to send them out of your territory. I know I can recommend my, my, my pastor's books to other people, you know, in other teaching, maybe in the area of prosperity or healing or other things. But this very teaching I'm talking about tonight, how to deal with witch, witches, how to send them out of your territory. I recommend T.B. Joshua's Early Days in Ministry video for you. I recommend it. Go and watch it. Go and watch it. And learn his skills, learn his secret, learn his operation. It will help you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Oh, he was all about it. I can see God's servant. Oh, Pastor Dwight, love you, sir. <laughs> I didn't know you're here. God bless you, sir. Love you. Love you. So right now, I want to begin to pray for people who are under witchcraft oppression. People that have been afflicted by witches and wizards. Your finances have been afflicted. Your wife has been afflicted. Your children have been afflicted. Your car has been afflicted. Your ministry has been afflicted. Your family has been afflicted. Your brother has been afflicted. Your sister has been afflicted. Whatever area that witches have afflicted your life and destiny, your family, tonight I command that affliction to scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command the affliction to scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command the affliction to scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus, let's begin to pray. Lord, every witchcraft oppression, every witchcraft oppression in the lives of your people, every witchcraft oppression in the lives of your people, every witchcraft oppression in the lives of your people, every satanic, chronic witchcraft oppression, the sicknesses that witches are given to them, Lord, the evil, the evil sickness and diseases that, that witches are given to them. It is 2.44 a.m. that we are praying. Father, we decree tonight, we command that sickness to die. We return it to their coven. We return the sickness to their grandmother in their coven. We return the sickness, oh God, to the executive witch. We return that sickness, oh God. We return the disease to their queen, the queen of their coven. We send the sickness back to them in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight as many ministries that have been afflicted, as many child, as many daughters of God, as many sons of God, as many men of God, as many women of God, as many members that have been afflicted by witchcraft oppression, by witchcraft spell, by witchcraft enchantment. We command that spell scatter by liquid fire where I erect the blood of Jesus. I sprinkle the blood. I erect the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. And they loved their, their lives even unto death. Tonight, by the blood of Jesus, I command heavy witchcraft oppression to scatter 
in the lives of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 29, our God is a consuming fire. I command every witchcraft coven that is in oppression, afflicting your people. I set fire on them, consuming fire, consume them, consuming fire. Hebrews 12 29, fire. We set it on them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft oppression. Every witchcraft subjugation, every witchcraft manipulation, every witchcraft spell that is putting families under, under, under influence of darkness, every witchcraft spell that brings darkness to families, tonight I command it to scatter. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 9, verse 5, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I speak the light of the world. I speak the light of God in the midst of darkness. Every heavy witchcraft darkness, I speak the light of God. Light shine, light shine, light shine. The Bible says that a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. He said, We are the light of the world. He said, No man can. And light the candle and put it on thy bushel. He must light the candle and put it on the candlestick. We are the candles of the herd. We are the candles of the Lord. I speak the light of God upon every age of darkness. I speak the light of God right now. I command nation. I command, I speak to nation where there is witchcraft oppression. I speak to Nigeria. I speak to Africa. I speak to America, North America, South America. I speak to United Kingdom. I I speak to Europe. I speak, oh God, to Australia, Asia, Russia. I command every witchcraft oppression to scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I speak deliverance to ministries. There are many ministries that have been under the oppression of witches and wizards. So men of God have, have packed out of ministries when they, they, they were not supposed to leave because they were under witchcraft AD manipulation. Lord, today, I command that witchcraft spell. I command that witchcraft grip over their ministry to scatter. I return them back to ministry in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they are, I command their ministry to yank up every shit that have been that have been wrought on your ministry. Every thesis that the enemies wrote on your ministry to scare people away from your church. Today, I command the thesis to be on fire. I will leave the blood of Jesus upon your ministry. Let the thesis be cleaned. I deploy angels to begin to clean up those thesis right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to families, every household enemies. Every household witches and wizards afflicting your people, afflicting families. I speak. The Bible says that a man's enemies shall be members of his own household. Micah chapter 7 verse 6. I command every household enemy, be disgraced. I expose you tonight. I expose you in that family. I expose you. Be exposed. And I send you to hell. In the mighty name of Jesus, I bring a big judgment against every powers of hell. I bring heavy judgment against you tonight by the power and authority in the blood of Jesus. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. I give unto you power and authority to trample and snake and scorpion and to overcome all the powers of the enemy that nothing shall by enemy in others. The Bible made us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. I decree the mighty name of Jesus by the power of divine translation of my redemptive Christ, my redemptive right in Christ Jesus. I command the heavy works of darkness over the lives of your people to be destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise. Let's lift our voices and begin to find God for an answer to prayer. Father, thank you, Lord. I cover your children with the blood of Jesus. I cover your servant, Pastor Udwak, with the blood of Jesus who have been on this broadcast watching. Father, I cover your servant with the blood of Jesus. Thank you for the work you've given to him. The work will grow in his hand. Thank you for his wife and his children. They will grow in power, in authority, and in grace and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for Jackson, who was on this broadcast, the first edition that I did. Father, bless him. Lord, as many that will watch this broadcast, those who just came and left, Father, bless them. 
Lord, as many who are going to watch this broadcast, Lord, I pray that their deliverance is sure in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Be thou exalted in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Thank you so very much, God's servant, for staying with me tonight to be part of the broadcast. I love you, sir. I love mommy. I love the children. Thank you so very much. I love, I send greetings to your family. I also send greetings to my family, to my beloved wife. I send greetings to my children. I send greetings to the church, the body of Christ. I send greetings to my family, believers all over the world. I love you all. I love you with the love of God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming my way. I will come your way again on Thursday next week in the evening. I will keep you posted on the time that we're going to have another teaching. But this teaching on how to save a witch out of your territory comes to an end this night. God bless you so very much. I love you. Thank you. My name remains Hero God's General. I love you. Till I see you again. Oh, before I go, is there anybody you are watching me? You want to say, Jesus, I want to make you my Lord and personal Savior. You're watching this broadcast or you watch this broadcast. You want to say, Father, I have passed through so much affliction. I want to give you my life. I want to give you my soul. I want you to come into my life. I want you to pray this simple prayer of faith with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive my sins. Cancel my name from the book of death and write my name in the book of life. Accept me, Lord, into your kingdom. I am born again today. Jesus, come into my life and make me a brand new person. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Maybe you were also a Christian Along the way, you backslid and said, Father, forgive my sins. I return to you tonight. As the prodigal son returned to the Father, I return to you. Forgive my sins. Make my fire to burn again. Make me to a blaze again for you. Till you come in your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for praying that simple prayer of faith. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful thing you've done to make a covenant, to make a decision to walk with the Lord and to accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ into your life. I want to I want to I want to encourage you in your city where you are to find a Bible-based church and register your membership. Please grow in the word of God. Make sure you keep growing in the word of God and I want you to send me um, a comment to send me a text message either on my WhatsApp number plus 234 70 3117 9408. You can send me a text message to tell me about the great things that God is doing in your life and how you're growing in your Christian life. If you have anything that you're trusting God when you want us to take it up to God in prayers, Feel free to share with me or either you drop any message you have on the comment session. The Lord bless you. And I want to say I will be very happy to see you someday in heaven when Jesus will come in his glory. God bless you and I believe you will make the rapture. When the trumpet shall sound, you will hear the sound of the trumpet and you will make the rapture. God bless you. I love you. Keep the fire burning till the end of time. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I remain hero, ghost general. Bye-bye. I love you.